Okay, welcome family to this class. Today we're going to be talking about alchemizing rage and anger and how this energy can be transformed and alchemized into other energies, um, particularly into fuel for our mission, into passion, into an active energy where we are responding in a, an appropriate way. And this uh, workshop is now being held inside the Earth Star Academy. But I know that I promised you guys I'll be uploading this. So if you're listening to this in a recording at some point, um, welcome. I'm so excited for you to be here. This conversation is going to be very multifaceted and it's very pertinent to our mission at this time because all the way through to the end of 2024, the earth is undergoing just a really cosmic and epic and reva, I was going to say revolutionary, but it's also revelationary process of these ancient original massive new ancient and new because they've been offline for so long so to us is like a new energy system that is coming online and i've been talking about these for like maybe a couple years now the dragon lines these dragon um new dragon energy systems and um it's such a big conversation because, you know, you might think, well, what does this have to do with revelations? What does this have to do with rage? It's truly all one story. And it's fascinating to me because, you know, in the development of this academy, you know, you guys know that we've had workshops on all sorts of stuff and the curriculum is on all sorts of stuff. And then somehow it all ties just together because truly our mission on earth is so multifaceted right and and so today when we're talking about anger and rage we're really approaching it from this higher perspective of remembering our place in the world we're playing uh, remembering how interconnected human beings are to the earth and how human beings you know we have this purpose on the earth and when humans are living in right uh, relationship with the earth meaning in our right purpose in how we naturally and most highest organically fit with the earth um, we are truly co-creators and guardians of all of the sacred keys and codes and portals and beings that she holds and so understanding that we have this purpose and human bodies are tuned and built and designed to interact with the earth that when we experience something like you know this planetary awakening we each have a really important role in that and it's such a big and ancient story because it goes all the way back to you know why the earth gave birth to human beings to begin with <laughs> because obviously um as the creation goddess as the next higher dimensional collective logos of each of ourselves the earth is like our collective higher self, our collective greater self, the next octave of our logos, the planetary logos. And so understanding that everything in our body has a purpose, everything on the earth has a purpose. And we see this in the ecological genius of how there are literally possibly millions different species of all sorts of everything. And somehow it just all exists harmoniously as a unit. And this is ecology. There is an intelligence, a consciousness that is orchestrating it. There is a conductor to this grand symphony of life. And that conductor is Mother Earth and the Sun and Mother Father God. And it's all one unified creation that is giving birth to this experience that we're having here on Earth. And so human beings have long been created to be a guardian species to be an angelic species to be um a species that a species that can host and anchor the highest dimensionalities of creation intelligence and consciousness we were designed to be able to become self-aware to the fact that we are sparks and embodiments of the divine and we were made to have this awareness of creation, to have this experience of being an individual, all the while being in complete union, to be able to witness ourself as a universal whole and to witness the beauty of all of the unique expressions that exist here on earth. And so 
understanding that this has been our destiny this whole time since before we were a tiny amoeba emerging from the deep um, ocean volcanoes as a single cellular organism there was always a destiny throughout the billions of years that we've been journeying towards this moment of fulfillment and graduation and this is all very important because this is our purpose and this is like the deepest level of our purpose and this month this month we have this um, opportunity to really begin to dial in to what awakening the dragons really mean and what it will look like both on a planetary level and also in our own lives because i feel like this whole idea that there are dragons in stasis like i feel like that sometimes i feel like even though you know i'm on my mission i feel like there's still a really big part of me maybe like some connection to my power or my memories or um my destiny energy what i'm able to exert um what i'm able to create in the world there's still such a big part of me that seems like it's not like online yet and it's like we know we have this big purpose we know we're supposed to be doing something so powerful but it's almost like we're in this low gear we just can't exert and even if we're riding our bike really fast we're not going very far because there's a part of us that hasn't just fully come online and turned on yet and I really do feel like this is a coordinated effort. There are a lot of star seeds who are like literal time capsules. I feel like every star seed on some level is because our DNA is coded with timeline markers. It's like many of us had to go through experiences in the false matrix. And if we were just totally awake to our highest self the whole time, we would not have made certain decisions. We would not have gone out with certain people and we just wouldn't have learn the things that we needed to learn ultimately walking in the 3d and so parts of our consciousness had to be offline for us to go through those experiences as a human being and then slowly it's like okay once once this event occurs in my lifetime then this dna codon is gonna come online once you know this timeline marker on earth like for example maybe it's a catastrophic event or it's a olympic game or like whatever there's like a planetary thing that happens maybe is a level of critical mass because timelines are kind of unpredictable in that way right it's like we couldn't really fully predict like what time the earth is going to hit like 51 percent critical mass and so the dna is coded in a very holographic way where it's like when this happens then this dna will come online when we're at this phase of planetary consciousness, then this group of people is going to come into this level of consciousness to facilitate this movement on a planetary level. There are all of these human beings that are dragons, not maybe not literally, even though some of you are very connected to dragons and may literally be dragons. Um, some, some of this is like Me uh, metaphorical right it's like to be a dragon is to be a titan to be someone that is holding a lot of sovereignty and creative power and a lot of honor in our heart a dragon is just like an archetype of a, a sort of master being who um, is an embodiment of the creational power that and they're living that out in the world in service and honor to all of life so you know that's kind of what a dragon is is um and how most, you know, high Krishna dragons operate, how dragon families originally, um, these are the kind of pillars that are established in the dragon families that help us hold a vibration of honor in our heart, in service to life and to the earth and to all of creation. So I would say every single person that is drawn to this work, to grid work or being a service to the earth, um, you are, you know, already exemplifying these qualities of dragon intelligence. And so you are, in, in a sense, a dragon in stasis because so many of you, you know, are here because you're looking for that next octave of activating your mission, of exerting your energy in a direction where you're really making a difference and you feel that impact that you're making in the earth, right? So that's your part of you being kind of, kind of this dragon in stasis. And as 
you awaken your power, as you awaken to your soul's desire to be of service, there's a simultaneous thing that's happening where the earth is actually also a dragon and there are also dragon beings inside the earth that are waiting for a specific time to fully awaken. And this is a timeline technology because you kind of have to wait till all the stars are aligned for a revolution to fully take place, right? Because, you know, if you wake up too early and then like, for example, back in, you know, the 1400s or whenever the um, crusades and the massacres and all of these things happened, it's like the awakening couldn't happen during those times because of the consciousness of the earth, because we weren't in the right cosmological um, placement in the universe. You know, we were just not set up to fully complete our desire and our prophecy at those times. Yeah. But there were still things that we needed to seed. So this has been a very multi-lifetime, multi-millions of years process that we've been in, really. Right? And we have, like, all these memories of having been murdered. Like, I was just processing this trauma yesterday of being in one of these little cages, being, like, wielded down the street, and people were, like, throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> and I, in my heart, I was like, I don't even care. Like, I'm still going to run my mouth. Like, I'm going to say whatever I need to say. <laughs> <laughs> just you can throw tomatoes at me if you if you want, but this is who I am. Um, <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm sure we've all gone through those kinds of experiences that ended, you know, in different ways, in different lifetimes. But in those lifetimes, it, the timeline, you know, we just weren't. It wasn't the time we were practicing. We were training we were anchoring different energies we we're preparing but i just feel it in my bones that everything is lining up in this lifetime for this massive uh completion to happen and so these dragons have literally waiting for a really long time they've been here this whole time waiting for the right time to basically amplify this impulse to catapult humanity into another octave of collective consciousness which in turn is going to catapult the universe into another octave of consciousness but it doesn't even matter like we talk about the macrocosmic the microcosmic and we can just focus on what's on the earth we don't even have to think about what's going on in the universe sometimes it's you know for some of you curious ones or it helps you to remember your cosmic self so we talk about it a little bit but really it's enough to just think about it on a planetary logos level where we're going through this massive planetary ascension in consciousness and understanding of our place and our role of what life truly is and these kinds of things <clears throat> and so we have this window where these dragons are beginning to wake up and next year is the year of the emerald dragon i'm sure these things are just <laughs> not coincidences at all and i say emerald dragon because it's the year of the wood dragon and the color of wood is green so it is this emerald dragon year and um and it's literally just like a synchronicity because since last year they've been sharing with me that the dragons will come online fully at the end of 2024 and then I met Rory Duff, who actually has been like scientifically measuring the dragon lines. I didn't even know him when I started receiving downloads about the dragons. And he also confirmed that the dragons are going to come online fully at the end of 2024. And so I actually had no idea what I was even talking about. I was just like getting these downloads. And he was like, yeah, that makes sense. Because ever since 2000 and some year, I don't remember exactly. Um... The harmony days of the Earth's grids has been increasing. Harmony days is when, usually during the equinox and the solstices, is when all of the ley lines in the Earth kind of come into this harmonic, uh, harmonic resonance. And it amplifies our human ability to communicate and kind of click into the Earth's consciousness. And for whatever reason, when this happens, you know, so many ancient cultures had their ritual days on these days because they could feel this 
opening of consciousness that they were able to connect with the earth and their guardian spirits so much easier on these days and so usually it lasts about three days these harmony days you know in and around before and after the solstices and the equinoxes and since you know however many years ago maybe 20 years ago he noticed that every year the harmony days was getting longer and longer and longer and eventually you know this year they became i think something like 30 days long and he just made a graph where he measured how much longer the harmony days were getting every year and he calculated that by the if it just keeps increasing at this rate that by the end of 2024 then the harmony days will just be a thing constantly which is kind of extraordinary um because what this means is that every single person every single single thing every single thing that lives on the planet is inescapably gonna be radiated with original creation dragon consciousness and the grids of the earth holds the base vibration and the base consciousness for all of life on earth and this is why there's been so much wars in the grids right why you know there are churches and schools and wars and all these things is so that it keeps it damages the earth's base consciousness and it keeps human consciousness low it's part of this consciousness enslavement um, technology and so if that's what's been keeping human consciousness low i mean it's not the only thing there's also chemical warfare and poisons and television and 5g and all those things but the earth's grid is a really big part of all of this right it's one way that they're damaging the collective consciousness sphere to keep energy low and so if the dragons all come online and harmony day becomes like a permanent fixture for a certain amount of time this literally means that whatever damage that has been done to the earth's grids and whatever implication that has on human consciousness and how humans are not in union with the earth and are separate severed from the earth and um, are living in their minds which is like a frequency like a brainwave frequency that's in separation or disconnection from the collective consciousness fields of this living orb that we're all on that all of that will start to lose its effect on human beings and they will just start to harmonize with the consciousness that is flying radiating pulsing through these dragon lines um now I promise we're getting to the point, the part where we're alchemizing our rage. This is all very important because um, the control system has done a lot of different things to numb us out. And this is why next week our um, workshop is going to be about clearing numbing shield and our mind, our heart and our sexual centers. And I'll be putting the Zoom link and the time to that in the description below um but essentially okay if you okay avatar is a great example and i i had a really hard time watching the second avatar movie because it was just so um i felt like it was like poaching this energy it was poaching our compassion and it didn't really provide like a lot of solutions or medicine. It was just like this abuse on the devastation of the machine that has incurred on the world. But essentially, you know, these scenes when they set the world tree on fire and the scene when they're, you know, taking and stealing the pineal fluids of the whale, like it's like if we were all a species that loved the earth so much, each and every one of us have ancestors that prayed at the world trees and prayed and drank from the source water and had a deep connection with every blade of, of grass and all of the animals in the forest. We all had such a deep relationship with our home. Even if you're not from the earth, you had a deep relationship with some planet that was your host, your mother, right? Your creator. And so there's a deep mammalian human earthling um biological um sensitive love that humans have for life 
that is inherent, it's innate, right? And so if that is the truth, then we all, if we were like all not numb and had access to our rage and had access to our sacred power, none of like none of us would be asking like what is my mission what am i supposed to be doing <laughs> right we would be in full response already to what is occurring we would be speaking our mind and talking passionately to everyone we can find who will listen to us we would be you know creating community groups and chats and sharing this vibration and this awareness in every way we could we would be trying our best to protect this this life that is so sacred to us okay um for example with you know maui or with any situation where there is like even wars like even the wars that just they feed us like ukraine or whatever it is anytime we see like this tragedy and just like um this horrific empty killing we would be outraged and that rage would you know be a signal in our body in our soul that is communicating to us that some harm is being done to something that we love so much that we really care about um so where is the disconnect and this is what we're going to talk about because for most of us there's just been so many wars and tragedies and persecution trauma, right, that we've experienced in past lives that at this point we are traumatized and terrified. And this is a byproduct of this kind of war on creation, war on sovereignty that has happened, and war on God ultimately. Um, that has gone on for a really long time and who i think for most of us it's like we're afraid of that rage um for many many reasons right we're afraid that it could hurt our, our us or our family we could get killed we could you know sometimes in some lives we said the wrong thing and our whole village got set on fire right in some lifetimes we were that person that try to stay true to ourselves, but then you know we ended up our whole family was killed in front of us right so if you haven't noticed like i say this sometimes with like the jesus on a cross like this world is just fraught with threats to people very subconscious hidden threats but they're very loud subconsciously they're very loud or get locked up lucy that's a great point i think that's like a really big one thank you so much for bringing that up Right now, it's like the mental health hospitals, like you're crazy, they're going to put you on pills, and nobody's going to believe you, right? Um, and so it's literally horrifying to listen and follow through with who we really are, just because of the way that the system is set up. And it has just seeped its way into the brains of our family members who are so mind controlled by I was thinking about this word conspiracy theory yesterday because it's like they literally make up things that are conspiracy theories all the time. Like, oh, these jabs are safe and effective. That's a conspiracy theory because, you know, you literally, if you can't prove it, um, then it's a conspiracy theory. So you're actually the ones that are creating conspiracy theories left and right. And then, you know, they're turning around and gaslighting us. So, um, Long story short, you know, this fear, this horror, it makes us um, suppress our rage. It makes us suppress this organic sensation because truly, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, I'm just a nice person. I never get angry at anything. And the, the more somebody says that, the more rage I feel they have deep inside of them because they're just, you know, it's like, if you are a human being um, and you see the cigarette butts and the freaking water that's like brown with foam, if you're not getting fucking angry about that, then there is some disconnect happening in your body. Um, not saying that, you, you know, this, this workshop is about alchemizing rage but the first step of that is actually acknowledging it and allowing that energy to come up and if you can't find it 
that is a part of this whole thing where it's like that part of you is in stasis because your rage is your sacred power, right? Your rage is this guardianship, this warriorship that is latent, waiting to come online, is, is where your soul feels meaning and purpose in your body. And so if you don't feel rage watching, you know, um, the sound of freedom or learning about human trafficking, right, then your body and your mind is very numb. It's not that you don't have rage, it's that you're offline. Your body is overwhelmed with how big the problem is and how much rage there is, how offended you really are to the point where you just are disassociated and you're not feeling it at all, right? Because again, if you are a human, you are an animal that's part of the ecosystem and no, like imagine if someone came and just started to harm your mother or your child or your dog. If somebody just came into your house and just stabbed your dog, you know, you're not just going to stand there and say, oh, well, you know, forgiveness is everything and I don't feel anything, <laughs> right? You're going to be horrified and you're going to be very upset because you really love that person or that dog that someone is harming. And that's just a natural way that your biology is designed to respond in an act of protection and guardianship over what you care about. So it's the same thing on a larger level, on a planetary level, there is a force that is killing everything and destroying our home. And the correct response to that would first be this organic uprising of anger and rage because anger and rage occurs when our boundaries are being transgressed upon, when someone is doing something that we know should not be done or isn't right isn't correct and our rage is part of this sacred templar of our heart of our body's technology to know what is morally correct and what is in true alignment with creation and what isn't and when we see something that isn't in alignment or isn't in reverence right isn't prayerful isn't loving towards that which is sacred to us that is when we're designed, we're built to be full of this energy which moves us into a response of, you better stop. Um, I think people say, um, fuck around and find out. <laughs> right? Okay, and so, who? I feel that unprocessed or unmet rage can begin to like because energy will always move and so if you if that energy of that response is subdued or numbed out then it's going to kind of flow out in different kinds of ways you could be super depressed right you could feel really numb and you'll try to distract yourself you could feel like you are anxious sometimes the depression happens um for many reasons, right? It's like depression can happen if we know that we are not um, living in alignment with our purpose, but then there's other parts of us that are like shutting us down and are like if there are parts of us that are in persecution fear and we know that we have to stand up and shine our light, but that part is keeping us small and not allowing us to speak our truth, then we're going to just feel powerless and we'll, we'll have this rage, we'll not know how to express it, and then this suppresses our being, and we move into depression. And then when we're in that depression, we want to just avoid it. And so this is when we start to self-distract with scrolling and food and, you know, other kinds of addictions. Whew. Um, or we're just overwhelmed, right? Because there's so much to be upset about. Like, if you truly love this world, everywhere you turn, there's something to be upset about. So, you know, some people feel like they'll just be angry all the time. Like, well, like, it's not productive if I'm just rageful all the time and I'm just yelling at my neighbor to stop putting pesticides on his lawn. Um, and, you know, you really could be yelling at everybody and then you're just this insane person. <laughs> That's not very productive. So, how do we 
alchemize that raw power this is really important because this is the path of mastery where it's like when a toddler is you know wanting to draw a picture and you're like we have to get in the car this is based on a true story of course <laughs> she just really wants to draw a picture and I'm like mom is late for this appointment we gotta go to the car and then you know we take her away from the picture but that she was really passionate about the picture right the picture was sacred to her that's like what her soul really wanted to do in that moment and so because that had been intruded upon now she's really angry and she's just crying and screaming and she's very upset. Um, this is when our emotional self is very young and we're in this very youthful emotional maturity and this is developmentally correct and normal for a toddler. Um, and then in this world we're meant to learn to cultivate our emotional intelligence and to evolve our emotional body and to age our sacral chakra and our um, solar plexus chakra to cultivate maturity, which is when we temper our primal with wisdom of our soul. Also known as, you know, higher self intelligence or um, source intelligence or, you know, easily called emotional maturity. Unfortunately, most of us were not taught or role modeled what true emotional maturity looks like, right? I mean, you know, people, the adults in my life were very often having temper tantrums. And part of this is like, you know, they weren't fully held as a child when they had their temper tantrums. And so they learned that the world is not safe. And then they never evolved past that point. And they never learned how to fully take responsibility and to alchemize our emotions. Yeah. And then the other thing is just that, you know, this world is constantly pumping us full of emotional immaturity, like all reality TV shows. <laughs> and it's so funny. I sometimes I have these, you know, business meetings with Charlie and with our team members where it's like, you know, a work meeting where we're talking about like, okay, what's your job? What are you doing? But it's just so beautiful when we come together because, you know, we have a check-in and people are talking about their dreams with like dragons in them. And then they're talking about this healing that they did and how, you know, they had this like false matrix fear that was coming up. And long story short, um, um it was funny like when charlie and i were talking we we're like this is like an, an the opposite of a reality tv show because like we were it's like every time somebody gets triggered because you know you're in a work environment and there was like the rat race and so many of our people have worked in the corporate you're bound to get triggered when money is involved right when business is involved like triggers are bound to happen but it's like we're so safe with each other it's just like wow, you know, that really triggered my scarcity wound. And I'm so grateful that, you know, and we're just like, and I feel so safe with you. Like, thank you so much. And we're just like having these like conversations that literally like our and like is just dispelling drama. It's like where drama goes to die. It's like the anti-reality TV show. <laughs> we're like, we should live stream some of these meetings because it's just so soothing. And then it's like, after that, Charlie would be like, wow. I feel so calm in my body right now. <laughs> so like we should really just record this because, you know, that whole reality TV show, it literally is an engine of emotional instability and nervous system unrest. Right? And it's emotional immaturity at the end of the day. It's just like hyper sensationalizing emotional immaturity and normalizing it in this ridiculous way. Um, again, and the kids are watching these TV shows and we're never being role modeled what being a grounded, self-responsible and self-accountable human being feels like on an emotional level. <laughs> um, so our emotions and the water in our body and how our soul lives inside of our body. Um, 
it's a very interwoven and interconnected process. It's like our soul is experiencing the world both through our senses and through our sentience. So we're gaining these experiences and this data and then our soul is having like an interactive experience with the world and that interactive experience is navigated by our emotions because our emotions is what tells us like okay this is what i'm attracted to and this is what i like and this is what makes me feel passionate and this is what makes me feel sad and all those emotions they give our soul the sense of direction in our life and that's really what emotions are for is to help our soul navigate our life right to be this feedback this intermediary between um data that we're receiving from our experience and our senses and our soul and how our soul is processing that that data so when we have emotional maturity we can allow our soul to be the assessor or the experiencer of our emotions yeah and it's beautiful because this phrase has been just like living with me it's like be as water be as water oh you can cop car flying by i'm gonna just let him pass yeah i think i will literally record one of charlie and i's conversations one day because we're literally like on the phone for four hours and we just like <laughs> just like i'm like wow i'm really triggered right now and i'm <laughs> and then it's like and then sometimes like he's just like okay well are you do you feel ready to just talk about that or do you want to just you know sit with it and just let's just move this to this other thing anyway it's just really <laughs> really precious um and then after like a really deep healing, we're like back to talking about like live calls or something, something very <laughs> practical. Um, okay, Whew. let's refocus here. All right, so our higher self is meant to be the assessor and the experiencer of our emotions. And usually what happens is that a person, because we... Are not in touch with higher self we haven't been role modeled what it looks like to have access to higher self and when maybe when we were a child we learned that our emotions are not valid and when we express our emotions we're going to be told that we're doing something wrong right because you know when you're a kid and you're crying your mom is like okay stop crying or you're in a public place and like mom is just trying to get you to stop doing what you're doing and those emotions never know what it feels like to be held in maturity and safety and so um these are the parts of us that don't know what to do with emotions at all and so of course the best thing to do is just to suppress them because then nobody needs to know about it and we're not going to embarrass ourselves and but then we miss out on that amazing information that our soul needs to guide us in our life so then in this process of allowing our higher self to be the assessor um, one way that we can begin to access the rage is through doing a rage ceremony and we do have a recording um, in the uh, live call recording section it's like a 30 minute long guided journey where you know you just guided to allow your body to express itself and have a tantrum basically have a contained demolition have a contained um intentional tantrum where you're allowing yourself to just express whatever anger and rage that you're feeling in your body and then i realized that that was really only like the first step it's the first process because once you express the rage 
you know, unless a response is created, unless your soul actually hears what the rage is about and then makes a directional decision in life, then you're just going to need to do it again or you're going to get upset about something else. And so it's like, you know, we can do this rage ceremony um, and some of us could just be doing the rage ceremony every day for the rest of our life um, because there's so much to be angry about. But then it's like the amazing things, like once we're in touch with the rage, it's like what what really upsets us? And this gives our soul such valuable information because whatever is the thing that makes you the most angry is the thing that your soul cares about the most. And this is like a giant signpost. If there could be like a neon sign where your guys are like, this is your mission. This is your mission. It's just that thing that you're like, oh, God, I'm going to punch through a wall. Like when you see this happen, you're just like livid. And that anger is so sacred. That rage is so sacred because it's literally your soul having a response to something that is um, betraying something sacred to you that is aggressing or destroying or damaging something that is dear to you that you love so much that you should care about right we all should care we should care about all the things yeah Whew. and so a lot of um i've heard like some really successful business coaches talk about like you should always have an enemy like this i think the person i heard this from is um patrick bet david i went like because shane was going to this um business plan webinar and i was just like in the background puttering around and the guy's like you should have an enemy and i'm like what is he talking about i want to have an enemy he's like yeah i have my enemy on a picture at my desk because i just look at him and i'm like oh i'm gonna kill it today i'm gonna do such a good job i'm gonna rub in his face <laughs> and i think that that is a great example of how this energy is alchemized when we approach emotions with our higher self with our higher intelligence with our emotional maturity to understand that emotions are communications between our human experience and our soul and our emotions give our soul feedback and important data on the direction that we need to take in our life so if you're really depressed for example and you're going to work clearly that's not a good environment for you and instead of getting distraught and complaining about it and going to a victim mode the higher self would say okay look this is not the right place for us but we need to eat so how about the responsible thing is like, let's do some research. Let's do some soul searching. Like, what do I really like to do? What do I want my life to look like? That would be the mature response. The immature response or the non-self response, non-higher self response would be, I'm so depressed. I'm just going to complain to my next door neighbor about how much I hate my job for the next 30 years. <laughs> right? And this is how we dismiss our emotions and, you know, not respond from that place of alchemy. So rage is actually such a, um, it's a mechanism because when you're so angry, you're actually getting this energy dump. It's almost like all of a sudden you have this lithium battery, right? And you have so much energy and that energy is your body basically coming up with a response of giving you the energy that you need to change or to shift whatever it is that you're angry about, right? So usually that would be if there was an immediate danger, for example, or, you know, a great example is actually in, in um, Avatar when the, I think one of the beings lost her child and this mother just like got so mad and she of course went and killed the person that killed her child because that person was still after her children <laughs> it's kind of intense but we are like animals in a way 
we have emotions and feelings and there is life and there is death and you know there is this very animalistic part of us that we're being locked away from because we're being locked into our mind and this is where we're locked away from our power where we are like oh you know you know hopefully it just becomes better like new earth is here right haha <laughs> um <laughs> and like meanwhile it's like you know the human trafficking and all the things the world's on fire and it's like it, we're just in our head like you know love and light la la land um there's something so sacred about our body and our body's natural processes and you know i really just like how i believe our diseases the sickness is the body's way of healing our emotions are our body's way of communicating with our soul and our anger and our rage is this blast it's like anger is like in the solar plexus in chinese medicine they say is in the liver and the liver is like all about your blood chi so when you have this burst of anger you are full of energy and that energy is meant to be exerted in some place whether it's chasing off you know a bad guy or letting somebody know hey this is my boundary and you're crossing it right now so please stop it <laughs> right so this is like that rage is communicating to our soul that our boundaries are being crossed that something sacred that we care about is being demeaned or damaged and we're being given our body is going hey here's the solution here's the energy that you ha you can have to solve whatever that thing is so then it becomes this sense of purpose yeah um now i think that the more that you care the more masterful this gets because you know if it's just a, a, a simple thing like maybe your husband just never washes the dishes and you just you're like oh my god can you please just wash the dishes like that's a little bit of rage right but then it's like if you know klaus Schwab is literally trying to create ai cities all over the planet you're like that's a big rage <laughs> That's a big transgression. You can't just go up to Klaus Schwab and slap him. So like, what is the way that then we can, like what, um, okay, the bigger the rage, the more energy, the more we care, the more energy. The more we care, the more rage, thus the more energy, right? The more we love, the more we're just angry that this is happening, the more energy we can pull that's responding to that thing. Okay, does that make sense? And so, you know, we're really here playing the long game. And so if we're saying, okay, the, <laughs> the soul is like, all right, you're really angry about these elites that are building these cities that you don't want. And they're trying to lock you down again. You're really pissed about that. Um, okay, so we want to respond. All right, our liver hurts. We got all this energy. Um, okay, so basically what you need to do is um do your push-ups every day eat really well um get your skills thinking about how you want to um steward and help people how you want to heal yourself so that you can be a place where you can speak with love so people will listen to you and this is like now a 10-year plan right <laughs> now like you're so mad you just want to do something but that response it's like you're you're asking your soul, okay, how can I stop this? And the soul is saying, okay, here's our 10-year plan. Here are all the things that you need to do to be powerful enough to be, you know, because the first thing is your voice, right? To be able to speak your truth. And, you know, this is why this whole dragon um, activation process is, you know, it began with like the womb healing, but it's really beginning this um, equinox with the voice activation because, um the first thing is activating your voice so that you can speak not from a place of emotional immaturity or sarcasm or judgment or urgency, but you're speaking from a place of grounded love and matter of factness and no, no fear. You're not, you don't care if people judge you or whatever, but you're going to speak from a place of conviction, right? If every single person in this room embodies a sanctified voice and you just are able to communicate from that place of divine love, but the ultimate truth, you know, there's no way that people can actually not listen to that. It's kind of this magic trick. So 
that's kind of our plan and our goal for our four day medicine container over the equinox is to sanctify our voice so that we can speak. And, you know, and then we have to purify our creational centers, our, our mind, our heart, and our, our, our sexual energy so that our energy body is operating correctly. And this is what we're going to do next week during the numbing shields workshop. So our body is this creator technology and how it works is through three dantians, right? We have our higher dantian, our middle dantian, our lower dantian. And these three dantians are three energy centers, just like an alternate chakra uh, system. It's just another layer of our energy body. Um, this is what allows for us to effortlessly go from idea to manifestation, idea to manifestation. So many of us have ideas, but it's the execution part that's hard. And the reason for that is because our creational centers are numbed out. And we're numbed out because these three centers, if you notice, are constantly under attack, right? Through our, our, our third eye, through programming, school, TV, video games, and you name it, right? It's like these dead light is attacking our mind so that we can't hear ourselves, we can't have silence in our mind, we're overthinking everything, and we can't come into a silent union with creation to receive the direction and the guidance that we need. So this is how the numbing shields in our mind, you know, it, the, um, I see my brother playing video games sometimes and I literally feel like looking at like, for example, Call of Duty, which is like a shooting game. I literally feel like something is stabbing my third eye. <laughs> it's like, just like the senseless killing, like shooting machine guns at war. And like our 10 year olds are just like watching these things all the time because you know their parents are exhausted and they're just they have a phone babysitter and now like our mind has to be so numbed out for that not to be disturbing you know as a human consciousness that is so full of light and imagination and curiosity and love and joy for our precious human angelic mind to be watching something like that it's like being pummeled and raped by this ai signal right and you know for most of us it hasn't been that bad but you know even just watching like a action movie where there's guns like how many people have seen somebody get shot by a gun and like when we were five years old on tv and that's just like how we grew up right that shit is not normal. Like, if you saw, like, we're not supposed to be seeing people like bleed to death in front of our eyes. Like, that is like this numbing shield in our mind. And then we wonder, you know, why are we coping with overthinking? Why is our mind, you know, not just in this fluid union place of safety and dancing with the universe? Well, you know, we've been under severe attack of our creational centers. And then our throat, our precious throat chakra, which is like really connected to the middle dantian, the heart, you know, again, the Kardashians, <laughs> were they like gossiping, gossip girls, like small talk, just going over and just talking shit about stuff, right? This sacred technology that is our voice, that is, you know, literally these sound vibrations that are from heaven, from your soul, radiating, tickling the fabric of the universe altering the fabric of time and space this divine technology of creation and people are using it to talk shit about people and think about what it does to this dainty beautiful biotechnology that is our throat like you know our heart you know same thing you know um just like the betrayal stories every single love song is about being dumped you know <laughs> or whatever so are like in, in bullies, bullies, like what the heck is bullying? It's just like this normalized, closed heart, inverted light body that's like, oh yeah, that's how kids are. Like, no, it's not. Kids aren't like that. Like I go for a walk with Kara and she just wants to pick flowers and hand them to me. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> that's not normal. Um, yes. And then, of course, our sexual centers and, you know, these are just the examples. And so in order for us to be able to alchemize that range, we also have to clean and dissolve our numbing shields, which is going to be the topic of our 
workshop and healing session next Thursday. Um, the, I can't remember the date. 15th, I think. <laughs> Thursday. Um, well, so anyway, once these two things are, are, you know, really compatible and actually Charlie is going to be doing another workshop the day after the numbing shields workshop about grief. And grief is another one of these energies that is essential for us to process because it's like, on the one hand is the rage. And then on the other hand is the grief. The rage is about, you know, what is happening and the grief is for the damage that has already been gone, already been done. And so grief, grief helps us come out of numbness by bringing our trauma into the present, by allowing our feelings to fully feel how much we love, because that's really what grief is, right? We feel grief when we lose something that we really care about, we really love. If we lose something that we don't care about, then we're not going to feel grief about it, right? So, um, yes, the workshops will be here. They're scheduled in the meetups. And in, I'll post, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll post the link to Thursday's workshop um, in the description. And of course, all of this is leading up to our four-day um, event when I will be in Mo'orea, which is a little heart-shaped, heart angel-shaped island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And, um, you know, after we clear our numbing shields, we are going to activate our voice and we're going to begin to softly awaken the dragon lines. And this brings us back to this whole rage conversation. Why is essential for us to begin to dissolve these frozen waters of emotions and energy? Is because I keep hearing the phrase, they will be shocked. Since the beginning of this year, I hear just the guardians coming in. They're like, I'm like, why do you guys have to be so cinematic? Sometimes they're like, they will be shocked. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, who? What, what are you talking about? Like, am I going to be shocked? Like, I don't like surprises. <laughs> so I, I think what they mean is that humanity will be shocked when they understand and can understand like what has happened. And so for me, I feel like it's something to do with disclosure. Um, and I feel like with the sound of freedom, it's already some level of disclosure that is happening. And um, I just feel that humans are very interconnected with the earth. And also as the earth is awakening, she is seeing what is happening to her children. Because remember, when the grids are subdued by the wars, you know, it's almost like there was this artificial matrix that had contained human civilization and the earth couldn't really like fully feel what was happening to them. And so it's almost like I saw the earth saw all of the children that are being trafficked. And at first it's like this blind rage, the blind rage of the mother, the blind rage of like, cathartic loss and outrage and then whew, we just talked about the emotional maturity status of humanity and it's kind of questionable so we're like okay so a bunch of humans wake up and they're outraged like that sounds like it could get pretty chaotic and so in order for us to hold a stable field you know we have to learn how to alchemize and to be good role models and to learn actually to channel that energy through time because this is when we really can become productive right it's like when i woke up in 2011 because i ended up in the hospital for my eating disorder i was really mad at the doctors and at society for failing me as this young person and then i was like okay i'm, I'm committed i'm gonna spend the next 10 years healing myself and i'm still pissed that anger that i had back then it is still fueling me so it's like this infinite tank that never runs out because i've sent my rage down in a direction and i've decided to master my time and i was like you know what whether i do something or not do something time is still going by and so i'm going to maximize my time and i'm going to 
allow this rage to trickle through and maybe I should just get a, a photo of Klaus Schraub from my office <laughs> just like Patrick said <laughs> I'll put it there to be like I'm doing this for you no just kidding I don't actually feel rage towards Klaus he's just uh I feel more like sad like I just feel like ever since I I saw one video of him and I, I just started seeing this like little boy in him that just wants his mother to be proud of him so much and he's like look I'm taking over the world are you proud of me mother and I just like wow like that's pathetic like I'm so sorry that you haven't learned how to do parts work and now you're here like um okay so one other one other code that wants to come through is about the inner masculine and the masculine architecture um and the inner well it's really about inner union and how the inner feminine and the inner masculine both needs to be in a matured state to fully channel rage <clears throat> into a christed passion and what christed passion is like when our rage is christed it means that what you get most upset about is seeing innocence and what is sacred being destroyed and at the core of what's happening on earth like that's like what destroys every true human being that is still organic right it's like when our villages were raided sure it was really devastating but like the deepest trauma that we experienced was the devastation of what was sacred to us because we already know that life goes on and we're all like one thing and life is going to continue like yeah it was traumatic to die but what really traumatized our heart as a family um just like in avatar when they burned down the world tree like yeah it sucks that they all lost their home but what hurt the most was this devastation of what was so sacred to them right and so this is a Christed passion because a Christ, Christed energy, Christ is recognizing the inherent sacredness of source materializing, of source becoming, source evolving, life existing. <laughs> so when you're a Christed being, when you're in Christ consciousness, you have reverence for life. You just love creation right and that creation that life it's what is most sacred to you and so you see what is happening on earth right now like at the simplest level is this complete degradation of all that is sacred from our innocence to our children to our sexuality to the earth right and so that is the source of this christed rage which also is sharing a space with this ancient trauma of devastation. Okay, and so that's why the picture of today's workshop is literally Jesus cracking a whip because I just think that's funny. Like people think, people think that Jesus was like this walking love and light like person, but he got really pissed when you know certain beings were in his temple being the opposite of holy and it's like <laughs> it's kind of this um christed passion energy he flipped and <laughs> carly says he flipped them tables so um elizabeth says the devastation is scarier than the rage i don't want to collapse into despondency and give up i think this is such a perfect uh thing to bring in at this moment in this conversation of this christed rage and this christed love is that when we come into this place where we are protecting life it's so beyond us that an energy beyond us begins to come in through us Yeah, and in the intermediate curriculum, the little that I've been able to get up, we have talked about this 
emerald crystal heart and how our heart is literally this technology that allows for us to activate into our mission is the same mechanism because when we care so much and we recognize this human limitation we come into surrender the human limitation is like okay we're only one little person and we can't do everything and we most of the time don't know what we're supposed to be doing anyway and then we surrender because we realize that god is this higher self part of all of us and god has all is all knowing is all wise is all capable so if we just surrender with this pure desire to be of service then we're going to be guided we're going to be led and we're never going to collapse because now we are an instrument we become this instrument for living creation and we're not supporting ourselves at that point all of the love in the universe is pouring through you in a response that your heart is emitting because your heart is finally being allowed because our parts are like not trusting our heart right it's like our, our mind is like oh you are your heart you can't handle it like you feel too much if i let you feel everything you're just gonna collapse and that's like a manager part that really just like it's just stuck in believing that she's doing everything herself and she needs to figure it all out and you know she's trying to protect you from how deep you feel but that was when you weren't you know shielded and connected to your mother father god that is always holding and shielding you and giving you everything that you need and so now that you are in that place where you are in union with creation it's safe to fully feel and to respond with the fullness of your being you're never going to be in a place where you don't have what it takes and you don't have what you need to feel empowered in that moment and i'd love to get your feedback on that um Elizabeth, just let me know how that lands and feels for you. Um, and I want to send a circle back. <laughs> Alex says, this is why, now I know why you need a co-host. Am I all over the place? Is that why you're saying that? <laughs> Too many side quests. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're spiraling back to the dragons and stasis because our heart is our piece of the emerald dragon. The emerald dragon is the emerald covenant is the earth. And the earth is like this front lines, right? These are the things that we've been kind of piecing together. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, we're piecing this together. And... Yeah, this energy that I, is coming through right now, I just need a second before I can um, articulate it in English. <laughs> One second. Yeah, okay. So this is why in the beginning of this call, we talked about how what's happening on Earth and what we need during this time is revolutionary but really it's revelationary because what revelations is like it's something being revealed right so what, what is being revealed in revelations and a lot of people think it's the evil that's being revealed but really what is being truly revealed is the presence of god is the power of creation is the glory of our source and what has given us all life and what has created us all and the magnificence of that love of that cosmic creation of that intelligence that is what is truly being revealed to us on this world and so in the process of that revelation right it actually happens through our heart it happens through our own heart of how this rage right this rage that we feel at the root of it is the revelation of how much god loves life I, I know that might sound like a stretch but hear me out right because the love that's inside of your heart is the same love that is the fabric of creation is what created us and so it's your own little spark of divine love your little spark of god and how you love this world 
it's only a fraction. It's only that little spark compared to how God feels about this world and his creation. And I said his, but I really mean like, you know, I don't want to say they. It's not they, them. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like it's it's not he, it's not she, it's, it's God. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that this little... <laughs> This little spark that you have in your heart is just a little tiny spark of how God truly feels, the passion that God feels for the completion, the graduation, the sovereign freedom, the arrival of heaven. That is the destiny, the prophecy of this world. And so that means that you are literally getting to experience like that peak of that reawakening that reclamation and that is really why every single one of you are here on earth right now you're like i'm not gonna miss that for no reason i'm going to earth i'm gonna witness the revelation of god in the heart of humanity because why would i want to be anywhere else in the whole universe than to be right there and you're experiencing it that revelation happens right inside of your own heart and it happens through right now you know, allowing to allowing yourself to feel the rage from the degradation of that, because ultimately that is your love. Again, you wouldn't be rageful. You wouldn't be offended if you didn't care. You wouldn't feel grief if you didn't love some something so much. And so it's good to care. It's important to care and it's important to feel. And now we're learning that when we reach and we remember how much love and support and power is flowing through for us from mother father god all the time and we're not left here on our own devices to alchemize all the pain in the whole world right we're here to do our part whatever is our part to play and we're all here doing it together every single one of us hearing the call supporting you know god's dream to come true all as one and so when we then you know allow that to soothe our parts that don't trust ourselves don't believe in ourselves feel like we're too small or insecure or emotionally unstable to be um pillars to be true pillars, to be powerful transformers, containers for this love to begin to transform this world. Whew. When we remember that we're supported by Mother, Father, God, and we drop our insecurities and our fears of it being too much, now we can allow our heart to do its job. What our heart was made to do, which is care and love and love all that is sacred and all that is beautiful, every single whale in the ocean, every single monkey, every single kind of tree, every drop of water in this whole world. And we're so sad and devastated and angry that they're still pumping these toxins. And now I'm fervent. It's like now my soul is allow, allowed to fully feel that. And it's moving my soul. It's redirecting my soul. I am my human self is stepping out of the way and allowing my soul to actually receive the direction that that emotion is meant to provide for my soul. And all of a sudden, instead of rage, what we feel is this Christed passion where you're not you don't, you're not even out there to get revenge. You care less about <laughs> these people and what they're doing. Really, you want them. Like, you're passionate about their healing, too, because it's all one thing. You know, it's not like we want to kill Bill Gates because he's, you know, been doing all this crazy stuff. Like, yeah, it's pretty messed up what he's been doing. But ultimately, what we want is for even the particles inside of Bill to find love, to find God. Every single particle, the whole universe is what this love in your heart is responding for, is protecting, is guarding. And that is like this Christed passion. And that's the thing that leads you to find this path 
every single lifetime, no matter what happened in the last one. Okay, so I think there was a lot of pieces in today's workshop, and I hope that, I mean, they all, this is how alchemy works, right? It's like, these are all the things that make it make sense, and they're pieced together. And this is really the beginning, because this is the first step. Allowing your heart to feel, allowing your sense of self to be ignited by this fi fire of rage and offense allowing that to trigger you allow it to activate you allow you to feel it allow it to awaken your soul and then all of a sudden it's just this medicine that is actually awakening the dragons in stasis that is you and as you awaken in your own body, you are actually supporting the dragons in the earth awaken because it's a signal. Remember how I was saying that they were waiting for certain timeline markers, our DNA and the DNA in the earth, our soul and, you know, these other versions of ourselves in the earth mantle that are the dragons. <laughs> we're all actually, you know, one thing. So they are operating, waiting for this timeline trigger as well. And we're quickly, you know, this year, next year, this is really like when the timeline triggers are happening, when the dragons are awakening from stasis and it's this interactive process where it's like you are awakening and you are remembering the power of your inner dragon, your inner creational dragon that is the guardian, the protector of all that is sacred and divine and all that is, you know, of God and the world and all that is Christed and pure and true. And as you spark those DNA codons on, you have um, many star seeds that are gifted in weaving and uh, interfacing with timelines. You have star codons in your DNA that actually directly interface with the earth. And so for all of you that feel this call, you are meant to be there at the Mo'orea event in October. Um, and it's really like one string of events. So if you're feeling the call, you should just be present for this string of events, right? Today, and then the numbing shields, we're, we're clearing the numbing shields, and then we're activating and sanctifying our Christed voice over um, the equinox weekend. And then we're going to be in Mo'orea over the Arcturus Gateway during the Ring of Fire eclipse. And it's amazing. I was just doing some research on the Ring of Fire eclipse. And the ring of fire is because the moon moves in front of the sun. And so you just see this ring of fire around the moon. And when I was looking at like the spiritual significance, it says that it's all about activating your purpose and stepping into your p t potential. It's like lighting up this fire of your soul. And I was like, wow, that really sounds like this christed passion that we're talking about it also sounds like this awakening dragons out of stasis that we're talking about it's like wow like it all works it's just all incredibly beyond anything that i could possibly imagine um because you know our highest self god is just has like the best imagination ever and so um this is what we're getting to do together we're beginning the um, initial sequences that are preparing the dragons to awaken from stasis. When I first had a vision about this Moorea event, I literally saw this like that the island was like this eyeball peeking out of the water, and like the rest of the dragon's body was like in the water. And like we did this ceremony. Actually, I had a massage earlier today. I saw this um, mound on the island, and it's like we need to like go into the inner earth chambers of this temple and perform some sort of sequence and then i saw literally the eyeball of the island just like open and it's like <laughs> i can't even describe it but this dragon just opens his eyes and it's like the elementals like wake up and um in order for there to be the most amount of peace possible on earth as many human beings as possible must come into emotional mastery 
and must begin to alchemize and heal and just, you know, um, I was going to say maturize, but is that a word? <laughs> begin to mature our human self, begin to take more accountability and responsibility, begin to really um, see ourself in a more detached way to help ourselves grow, to help ourselves become better versions of ourselves. Because as we do this, um, we are going to be working with the Earth's grids. And one of the things we'll be doing where in Orea is actually stabilizing the chain of volcanoes, the ring of fire around the Pacific Ocean. Um, and, you know, this is going to stabilize the Earth so that we don't have as many natural disasters, right? There's probably going to be some. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to just hold the earth it really depends on how many human beings really perform this alchemy in their life and begin to really uh, come into this frequency of union hieroscamos with god with ourself begin to activate our emerald crystal heart and to remember our unity with the the emerald order the emerald dragon body the emerald covenant that is the earth um so yeah, part of that is going to be about activating the timeline um, ignition codons as well. For those of you that are feeling connected to that, um, we are, here we are, here we are doing the thing we said we were going to do back on the mothership before we came down here. We're like, all right, in 2022 and in, in 2022 to 2024, the, the dragons are going to come online and this is what we're going to do. Okay. And now we're here and we're doing it. So, um, okay, I'm going to see, does anyone have any questions? Has this workshop been helpful? Um, yeah, so exciting. So exciting because it's actually all leading to an event next year over the 888 portal. Um, we're going to have an, a, an event, hopefully in Hawaii. And basically, so we, we thought we were going to go to Maorea to um, conceive a child. And our friend is still going to be conceiving their child. But then we were like, okay, the guardians told us to create this event on 888. It's been coming through. And so if we made a baby on Maori Island, then literally the baby's going to be born like that month. So like, how's that even going to be possible? And so then I was like, oh, like, um, and then they showed me that we were conceiving a dragon egg. And, you know, Stella, if you're watching this, do not clip that part. I don't need the world to be like seeing that I'm <laughs> conceiving a dragon egg. Um, <laughs> okay, it's, it's metaphorical because it's a timeline that we are all um, coming together that's like this emerald dragon ceremony that we're going to have together, like literally during the ring of fire eclipse. And we're basically going to come together and bring our like collective timeline codons together. And we're going to seed this intention for planetary hieroscamos to occur on 888 next year. And essentially what that is, is the same thing as the dragons coming online, right? Because the Christ emerges from the perfect union of mother father god and the dragon lines are the representation are the vehicle for this divine consciousness to flow through the earth okay so the full activation of the dragons is one and the same as the awakening of christ consciousness and that's the one and the same as literally the second return of christ because christ is returning as a frequency in every single one of us and so what we're doing is just intending for us to birth a timeline where the dragons are going to come fully online, permeating true cosmic hierogamic Christ consciousness throughout the planetary consciousness and that becoming the new baseline architecture that feeds every human being on earth. Okay, that was all a lot. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope you're so fired up right now. And... Um, Definitely going to be so excited. Um, I don't see any questions down here. 
Nikki says, so funny. I had a total anger breakdown the past three days. Okay, yeah, I guess I should just, you know, talk about the human level too. Like if it's something like, you know, if your partner is always doing something that gets on your nerves, I think for sometimes, especially women, it's harder for us to um, communicate our boundaries because we think it'll hurt their feelings or we just won't be listened to or we won't be heard. And so, you know, the way that we can allow anger and rage to be transformed in our own life is again to allow our soul to hear that anger and for a higher self to say, okay, well, what is making me angry here? Is it my trigger? Is is something that is really offending me on a soul level? Okay, it's really offending me on a soul level, then I need to communicate my boundary in a way that will be received. And so obviously that's not yelling at them and being like, oh my God, can you stop doing this? Like, I, I hate you. Um, it's going to be probably communicating from a place of, you know, your sanctified throat chakra where you're communicating from a place of love. You know, unless you're with just a severe narcissist who can really can't hear you, then maybe in that case, your soul will have to create a different impulse, but your soul will be guided. Your soul will know the direction to go as long as your soul is being allowed to assess what you're angry about and fully understand it, fully hear it, fully receive everything that anger has to communicate with you. Julie says, how do you access deeply buried anger and grief? Julie, have you tried my um, rage ceremony? It is in um, the live calls recording section. You can just search rage and it'll come up. And then Charlie is doing a grief workshop next Friday. And then what I would say is that that has to do with the numbing shield, particularly in the heart. So, you know, when we begin to um, dissolve the numbing shields, that should help you next week when we have that workshop. And it's very simple, actually. Essentially, we just bring gentle sensitivity into our heart and begin to reawaken the numbed flesh that is there. Um, and so, you know, next week it's going to be less talking. We're going to talk a little bit about the numbing shields, but we're more going to be doing a healing session to dissolve and to learn how to move our energy to dissolve and reopen those spaces in ourself. So, I'm, uh, 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 um, Elizabeth, did you ever respond? I know that I asked you if that um response was good for you and then i i just lost track of the chats <laughs> like now i don't know if you actually try to respond or not so okay um somebody said all right uh, where is it sorry is there a ceremony to alchemize rage I was going to ask you to give a pep talk on reopening the heart. Yeah, okay, so we'll be doing that next week. And then White Swan posted a link to the rage ceremony. And then there was a question. Are we going to engage in a rage ceremony as a Yisa community? Um, it's a good question. Um, so I, I think not any time that i can see which is really just this month i can't see further than that it's for like isa live calls and stuff every time i try to schedule live calls further than that you know it's just because time and energy is like so shifty and i i like to plan everything like in response to what our community is going through right because the mothership is just like this living thing is not coming from my mind so it's kind of hard to um imagine but then I do feel like this numbing shields clearing will be a very similar thing. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I have one more thing that I wanted to share about this, which is what I was talking about with the inner masculine and the inner feminine is that, um, so a lot of what we have issues with on the earth right now has to do with this of not having a father or not having a strong masculine container um, of safety and it has to do with this 
false god that has been superimposed, this false male god that makes us all feel insecure and judged and question ourselves are we sinning are we going to hell does he even love us like you know it's made us all have severe daddy issues just by him existing and so um we have this like the, what this does is one of two things either it makes us completely reject the masculine or it makes us completely like submissive and afraid of the masculine and in either of those scenarios when we have an emotion which is like a very um our emotions it's a very watery essence it's a flowing energy right and so if we don't have a strong masculine energy then we're not going to be able to contain that water and that water is going to sp spread everywhere and spill out and possibly cause tidal waves but um and this is why like earlier i think it's literally my son he's he he's some little asian like sage so he, he might as well have one of those little beards because he's like just be his water be his water and i think about this um this idea of being of water it's like water is you think water it's like soft kind of and it's not very strong and so you think that is weak and it's not very powerful but the way the, the power that water has is that it can be its power and is in its consistency and its power is in its ability to flow and so when we engage with the alchemy of rage the feminine we act as water as in we allow the emotions to flow we allow we don't suppress the emotion we allow the emotion to put, be fully felt we allow for ourselves to fully love and be present and allow that energy of that anger and rage to fully come through and be experienced and find a home for it tell it that it's safe it's valid it's okay to feel this way it's totally normal in fact you're a human being you should feel this way right this is just how it's organic your body is made to have this kind of reaction creating a home for that rage and then you know if we're too in the feminine that's when we get lost in the emotion this is when we're having a tantrum and crying and weeping and sometimes just getting attention and we get lost in it and it's not productive and it runs us over and it depletes us right and so when we have the feminine that is contained by our inner masculine, our inner masculine is going to have the direction. So it's like, okay, I'm going to let myself scream and do this rage ceremony and fully emote the energy. And then I'm going to create space so that my soul can truly assess this emotion and understand why and what I'm so passionate about. What do I love so much that I'm this angry? What do I love so much that I'm this upset that it's being distorted or degraded or damaged or killed in some way? And then that masculine energy is going to create a way of discipline where we can flow the water in a direction where we're not, you know, just going out and getting rageful and punching things and trying to destroy things. We're going to create a pathway for that energy to flow down the timeline so that it smooth and it moves in a way where um, we basically temper the energy does that make sense we contain the energy marta's like water benders just bending some water over here <laughs> yeah and so this is a um, way that we begin to gain emotional discipline and emotional discipline i feel like when that energy is too is imbalanced it's like we control our emotions and we don't allow ourselves to feel it but then when we feel it too much we go, lean into the feminine and now we're just too emotional all the time and that's not productive either and so we are learning to have this balanced relationship with our emotion where we're just assessing it's like okay Am I numb? I'm numb. I have to lean into the feminine and really feel and allow the emotions to come up so my soul can receive the messages as held in my emotion. 
And now that I have received the guidance and I feel I can, I can alchemize that emotion, I'm going to create a structure to flow that energy into, into the response that my soul is choosing to have. And that is when we begin to activate our mission and actually allow this rage to guide our soul. Yeah. And that is, I guess, how we perform time long, timeline emotions qigong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Bruce Lee said that too. Carly says, I also recommend finding some people near you and primal scream together around a fire regularly. <laughs> Agreed. I just do it in my car. <laughs> Pillows work really well, too, actually. I was surprised. You can really scream into a pillow and, like, people really don't hear you. <laughs> Okay, family, so um, thank you so much for being here today. I think that sums up our workshop today on alchemizing rage. I didn't see any questions here, so that's either a good sign or, you know, you weren't listening, but probably not that one because <laughs> I see your faces and it looks like you really enjoyed today's call. So um, I'm just kidding. Uh, and um Still get so scared of the rage not ending if dipped into. Yeah, that's so I would recommend listening back to the part where we talked about like what that is, right? Is just when our human self is feels like we have to because in our heart, our template is that we're here to be a guardian of the universe. Can little Siobhan be the sole guardian of the universe all by herself? No, that's just messed up. It will mess us up. We're going to need therapy for like 300 lifetimes if that was the case. And so this is why, but like each one of us is imbued with this crystal heart, with this Christed emerald crystal heart that leads us to love God and love creation in that way, right? And so when we feel scared that we won't be able to handle it, it's just this invitation for us to um, recognize that there's a part that is not in union with mother father god that is not receiving the absolute support and it's not like merged into the fabric of our divine unity and then from that place that part realizes oh I'm, i don't have to process all of this myself i can allow for this rage to come up and you know my soul it's really like held in this womb and when i allow this energy to come through god is going to come through and hold its part right and i'm only going to be processing my part and so when we when we bring those parts back home into union then you know they're not so scared and um and i think also then having a conversation with your inner masculine as well if your inner feminine is not trusting of your inner masculine because that's sometimes when what we're scared too because the, the feminine needs that balance if the feminine is just in this infinite emotion forever and the masculine is stunted or frozen or disappeared or not there or you know sometimes the feminine is just rejected the masculine the feminine is like i don't need you i hate you like don't come near me and so that's why the masculine can't be there for her <laughs> so um in the womb healing container we um had a whole week where we just had this kind of inner marriage counseling which we'll do in the intermediate level in the hierogamic union part uh, level one which is a sexual healing course where we really begin to work on these energies and have a harmony have a balance in ourself and allow our creational forces to work together again 
And if our inner feminine doesn't trust the inner masculine, there's just a conversation that needs to happen. Maybe we didn't have a role model for what healthy masculine energy feels like and what healthy containment feels like, right? And probably that's because when we were having a tantrum when we were little, our dad just like was not <laughs> a mature adult. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, hope that helps. And, um, yeah, I'm happy to repeat, you know, these things over and over again, because when we say it, it's just like you say it, but then what we're literally doing is bringing so many fragmented pieces of ourselves back into union with God. And when you think about it, every human being on this earth is that one of those fragments, right? And if our mission is to bring God's love back to the heart of every human and the heart of all of humanity, it really begins with us bringing all of our own parts that has severed or fallen away from God back to home. And it doesn't mean that we have to wait until we're like perfect and whatnot, but it's a work in process. And so I have so much compassion for all of us, myself included. And we're here to just remind each other again and again and again that we're not doing it ourselves. We can't do God's mission without God. And God loves us. <laughs> and we have everything we need, including each other, to make it all happen.